Welcome to the Siemens Cinerix NXN N2 installation overview video. In this video, we learn how to install the cylinder, mount the discharge piping, and make the electrical connections. Please be advised the purpose of this video is to provide a summary of the installation steps for the Siemens pre engineered Cinerix NXN nitrogen suppression system and should only be used as an additional resource. This video should not be used in place of the installation instructions. The official installation instructions can be found within the product's manual. Remember, the Cinerix NXN cylinders are under high pressure, which means this product is considered a dangerous good. Mishandling or misinstallation can result in injury or death. You must have the proper training and certifications before attempting to do the installation. In this video, we'll install a wall-mounted 80-liter cylinder. If you're using a floor-mounted rack, separate steps are needed. Proper load-bearing walls are required for installation. We're using a temporary wall in this video for demonstration purposes only. Do not use plastic dowels or anchors. To begin, install the mounting rail 46 inches above the floor. This distance may be different for other size systems. Once the mounting rail is installed, move the cylinder into position and remove the green netting. Attach the threaded rods to the mounting rail on both sides of the cylinder. Then attach the cylinder clamp so it sits on the threaded rods. Tighten the connections at the cylinder clamp and at the mounting rail. Now you can remove the protective cap from the cylinder and store it nearby. Underneath, you should see the actuator socket assembly packet. Set this aside. You'll need it later. Next, gather everything you need for the discharge assembly and remove the protective coverings. Decide which end of the flex hose will connect to the valve and which end will connect to the discharge assembly. Start by connecting the check valve and then the pressure regulator. Make sure the arrows on the components always point downstream of the cylinder and not toward it. Next, attach the female-to-female -female fitting onto the pressure regulator, but do not over-tighten. As you finish up the assembly, you'll use the proper tools and torque values found in the product manual to finish tightening. Now you can return to the cylinder and remove the valve cap and then proceed with connecting the discharge assembly. For this video, we're installing the assembly in a horizontal layout for easier viewing. Most job sites would require this to be in a vertical orientation, since the pipe will run along the ceiling. Mark the wall with the connection points, and then remove the assembly. Prepare the mounting location for the strut rail and secure it to the wall. Now it's time to connect the discharge assembly to the mounting rail. You can use Siemens recommended clamps for the pipe and pressure regulator, or you can source your own locally. Make sure you secure them accordingly. Connect the flex hose to the cylinder valve. Since the hose is already gasketed, you don't need to apply PTFE tape to the threads on the cylinder valve. Again, the flex hose can be installed in either orientation. Tighten the connections. Continue to build out your run of pipe. Pipe fittings and pipe supports should be installed in accordance with the latest edition of NFPA 2001 and FSSA's Piping Design Handbook. Fittings must be rated for a working pressure of 871 PSI. 300 pound malleable iron threaded fittings should do the trick. You should use a Schedule 40 steel pipe, either galvanized or black. Make sure to apply PTFE tape to all male threads downstream of the discharge assembly. Then attach the female to male fitting and install the nozzle. Remember the nozzle must be facing downwards, perpendicular to the ceiling. Although it only has two discharge holes, this is a 360 degree nozzle. If installed in a corner of a room, make sure neither of the holes are pointing into the corner. If installed near a wall, make sure that the holes point parallel to the wall and not at it. The distance between the nozzle and the nearest wall must be at least 10 inches 
and the nozzle must be at most one foot from the ceiling. Therefore, this demonstration is not compliant with our design specifications, and again is purely for educational purposes. Next, remove the locking screw from the valve using an Allen key. Be sure to store this in a safe place nearby. Now you can install the pressure gauge. This is easiest when the wire is still coiled. Do not attempt to loosen the nut on the back of the pressure gauge at any time, as you may break the device. Note that you should tighten the gauge by hand only. Run the wire leaving the gauge to an FTCIO or XTRIS module. Now it's time to assemble the solenoid actuator plug. Locate the package you set aside earlier and remove the components. Bring in the connection cable. First, slide the threaded knob onto the wire, knob side first. Next, slide the rubber gasket onto the wire toward the threaded knob. Then slide on the washer. Now you can slide on the socket housing. The wire should go in through the round hole and out the square. Let's connect the exposed wires to the terminal block. The positive and negatives are on the sides of the socket. These are represented by the black wires, which are polarity insensitive. The ground connection is in the center. Loosen the terminal screws and attach the wires. After tightening the terminal screws, slide the socket housing up the wires and press the socket into the housing. Now you can slide together all the components you've assembled on the wire and tighten the threaded knob. To finish preparing the solenoid actuator socket, place the square gasket on the front and the screw through the back. Now you're ready to remove the solenoid cap. Be sure to save this cap in case you need to send the cylinder out for a refill. The cap is required to be reattached prior to shipment. Do not connect the plug to the valve yet. First, connect the other end of the wires with the releasing module of the fire alarm control panel. Possible releasing modules include the XCI-2001 for the compact panel, the ZIC-4A for the modular panel, and the CLSA card on the Pad 5. Please refer to the installation instructions of those specific modules for details on how to make the proper terminations. Make sure to test the solenoid actuator by checking the voltage as outlined in section 6.3.2 of the manual. Check monitoring current as well as alarm current. It's very important to ensure that there are no faults or alarms on the panel when attaching the plug to the solenoid. You should also check to make sure there is no active voltage on the wiring before connecting the plug. When you're done checking the voltage and wiring, it's time to connect the solenoid actuator socket with the valve. Use a Phillips screwdriver to finish securing the socket to the valve. In this demo, we install the socket in a vertical orientation with wires leaving out of the bottom. You can, however, change the socket in a way to support other orientations. To do this, loosen the socket and pull the terminal block out of the housing. Then turn the terminal block and slide it back into the housing when the desired orientation is achieved. This allows you to install the actuator socket sideways or even upside down if needed. It's important to know that NFPA 2001 requires all initiating and releasing circuit wiring to be installed in conduit. There may be multiple ways to accomplish this. Illustrated here is just one approach. You can use 3 8 inch flexible conduit and connect it to an adapter, as shown here, using a Romex connector. Next, screw the adapter into the solenoid plug housing. You would not need to use the washer, gasket, threaded knob, or lock nut when following this approach. If required, a similar approach can be taken with the pressure gauge. Here, you can use a 3 8 inch rubber hose and press it firmly onto the nut on the back of the pressure gauge. Press the other end of the hose onto the threads of the adapter fitting. Secure the Romex connector to the conduit and thread it to the adapter fitting. This concludes our Cinerix NXN N2 installation overview video. Thank you for watching.